Hello there, welcome to this physics instructional class presented to you courtesy of O3 Schools Jam app. The only app you require while preparing for your jam, your O3 Schools Jam app. And it um, has so many features. It is literally one of the best things you can do for yourself by preparing for your jam. And um, all you have to do on downloading the app on either your Android phone or your Windows PC is simply activating the app. And activating the app costs 2,500 Naira. Simply follow the procedures as outlined when you go to when you click on activation and your app will be activated for you instantly. And um, there's no reason to be scared. Your, your money is safe from payment. Your app will get activated instantly. And then you can get access to the wide range of features presented on the app, which will help you as you prepare for your exam. And with that, so let's dive into this topic. In this class, we shall be studying capacitors. Capacitors. And what is a capacitor? A capacitor is a device which is used to store electric charges. A capacitor is simply an electronic device which stores electric charges. It is not a battery, please. It simply stores small charges. And um, the capacity or the ability of this capacitor to store these charges is referred to as capacitance. So the capacitance of a capacitor indicates its ability to store charges. And the unit of capacitance is farad, presented simply with a small letter, a capital letter F. So the unit of capacitance is farad, capital letter F. However, one farad is usually too big for most of our devices. A single farad is typically too large. So we then get our farad or our capacitance broken up into smaller parts. But instead of writing all the time 0 0.0005 farad or things like that, we then use other units. Some of these are prefixes which you should know by now, like centi and milli. In the case of capacitance, the most common one used to is micro, presented with this U-like shape. So typically what you get is microfarad. The micro is simply a prefix to the farad, and micro stands for times 10 to power minus 6. That means if I to see 2 microfarad, what this is actually representing is 2 times 10 to power minus 6 farad. So if you have a calculation to do under your capacitance, tend not to forget that there was a micro there. Don't just solve with 2 and expect to get the correct answer. Unless your answer is also presented in micro form. So always watch out for that. Don't neglect the micro. All right, so that is the capacitance of a capacitor. Now, what are the factors that affect this capacitance of capacitor? Now, in your jam level, the type of capacitor studied is usually referred to as a parallel plate capacitor. Parallel plate capacitor. Now, a parallel plate capacitor simply means we have two plates, metallic plates, and they are not touching each other. They are separated by either air or at times by a non-conductor, which is referred to in this situation as a dielectric material. So, that is a parallel plate capacitor. And then, what are the factors that then affect the capacitance of this type of capacitor? The factors that determine how much charge such a capacitor will be able to store. Now, the first one is the cross-sectional area of the plates. Cross-sectional area of said plates. Now, please note, the bigger the area, the bigger the capacitance. The smaller the area, the smaller the capacitance. It's that simple. Referring to the area, that means capacitance 
is proportional to the area they increase with each other however when looking at the distance between plates which is a second factor how close are these plates to one another then in that case the closer the plates are the bigger the capacitance and the smaller the plate and the further the plates are rather the smaller the capacitance that means capacitance will decrease as the space between the plates increases and capacitance will increase as the space between the plates decreases and um as you are aware mathematically we refer to that as an inverse duration And then last but not least, the third factor is the presence of dielectric material. The presence or absence of this dielectric material in between the plates. When there is no material there, those plates are separated purely by A. And they will be told that epsilon naught here represents permittivity of the A. However, if there's a material present, then we now have epsilon, which presents the permittivity of that material. But at times, however, rather than giving us the permittivity of this material directly, it is often prepared, often preferred rather, to give you what is referred to as relative permittivity relative permittivity that's double m now relative permittivity simply measures the ratio of the permittivity of any material to the permittivity of a so its permittivity will be permittivity of the material over the permittivity of a and combining all these into one simple equation tells us that capacitance equals to epsilon A over D. And um, as you are aware, epsilon A when I cross multiply can also be relative permittivity times permittivity of A, A over D. And if the material is simply A, there's no dielectric medium, then capacitance becomes epsilon not A over d so with any of these formulas you shall be able to actually analyze your capacitance of a capacitor now however moving on slightly there's something intriguing about capacitors which is that at times you can combine several capacitors to give you one effective capacitance so many, many, many capacitors combined in the circuit to give you just one total value, one net or resultant or effective capacitance. And um, when arranging or when you know putting these capacitors in the circuit, the way we connect them determines what type of capacitance we can get. So there are two ways for connecting every circuit. There's the series connection and then there's a parallel connection, series and parallel. Let's analyze them individually, starting with a series connection. Now, in a series connection of capacitors, they simply are connected head to tail. And please note, this is a symbol for capacitor. You have your two lines representing the wires in the circuit. And then these two short lines indicate the capacitor. And please note, do not confuse this with this. When you have one long and one short, that is a cell. But when you have two of the same height, then that is a capacitor. Now, so connecting in series simply means this is the type of connection I have. If I call this C1, C2, and C3. This is an example of a series connection. Head to tail. Think about it. If I call it tail and head, this head connects to the tail of the next one. And then the head of the next one is here. And this head connects to this tail while the other head comes out here. 
On the other hand, though, for a parallel connection, for a parallel connection, all the heads, if I also have one, two, and three, and let's say, you know, tails on the left, heads on the right, all the tails will have to gather to one single point and come out as one, while all the heads will gather to one point as well and come out as one. So, this is a parallel connection and this is a series connection. Please note, your circuit doesn't have to be purely series or purely parallel. It could be a combination of both. Some will be parallel to each other and some will be in series with each other. Now, um, analyzing just the series connection, we should be knowing, or we should know rather, that the total capacitance is given as 1 over CT equals 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3 and so on and so forth if there are more than three capacitors. For capacitors in series, to get your net capacitance becomes 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. If there were just two capacitors, I would obviously stop at C2. If there were four, I would continue to C4. And the next thing you should note is that if they are in series, then the charge across each capacitor is the same. Each of them are going to be having the same charge. However, the voltage across all of them gets shared by each capacitor. Meaning, if this total voltage was to come in, C1 takes its own share, C2 takes its own share, and C3 takes its own share. I hope that's clear. The capacitance is this, the charge is the same, while the voltage gets shared among them. However, for a parallel connection, for a parallel connection as such, then the total capacitance, CT, becomes C1 plus C2 plus C3. And again, and so on and so forth, if you have more capacitors. With the capacitors in parallel, to get your total capacitance, simply add each of your individual capacitances together. And then this kind of does the opposite of your series, implying that the charge in this case gets shared while the voltage is the same for everybody. So they all take the same voltage, but then the charge on the other hand gets shared individually between each. And that is the series connection and the parallel connection. And the last thing we shall look at before we are trying to move on to our past questions to solve some is the energy stored in this capacitor. The energy stored in the capacitor is given as 1 over 2 QV. But please note that if you are to actually find just the charge in the capacitor, the charge is equals to CV. The charge is equals to the capacitance times the voltage. Which means that if I come here, I could replace this charge with CV. So the energy becomes 1 over 2 CV with this V in front, which simply means 1 over 2 CV squared. So please note your formulas. Charge unit capacitor is CV. The energy is half QV or half CV squared. While for the series and parallel connection, this is what we have. And on that note, it is time for us to go through our past questions with our O3 schools jam app, and we shall be able to see and apply the knowledge we have just gained. And okay, let's start it up, opening our app. All right, so our first question that we shall be answering today on our capacitors comes from 1995 question 33. 1995 question 33, you can assess it on your own jump app. This question says the purpose of a dielectric material 
in a parallel plate capacitor is to the purpose of the dielectric material is to a increase its capacitance b decrease its capacitance c insulate the plates from each other and d increase the magnetic field between the plates now typically a lot of us will go and start analyzing between option a and b option a and b now however in this case there's a difference between a purpose and a consequence the purpose of this dielectric material is actually option c to help insulate the plates from each other however a consequence of insulating those plates is that typically it increases the capacitance but that is not its purpose please i can understand english language is important in this situation its purpose is to insulate as a result of said insulation capacitance gets increased that increased capacitance is a consequence but its purpose its job was simply to insulate so our answer is option c okay and then we'll move on to 1995 as well question 46 in this one we have um, a circuit with the droid so that we can analyze together and um this is two microfarad also two microfarad and up here is two microfarad i believe down here is four microfarad and here is four microfarad so that is our question i must be told the resultant capacitance in the figure above is what now to analyze Please note, if you look at this, these two are in series, then these two also are in series with this third, fourth one. But this third one, instead of simply being a single capacitor, is now split into two capacitors in parallel with each other. How can that be solved? All you have to do, first of all, please note, is that I have to combine these two capacitors that are in parallel to get a single capacitance. And therefore, if I have a single value presenting these two, all four of the capacitors will therefore be in series. So, getting, let's call it CR. Getting CR first will be CRO. Because they are in series, as we are aware, it becomes 2 plus, sorry, because these two are in parallel, it becomes 2 plus 4, 6 microfarad. And now I know that these two are represented by a single capacitance of six microfarad. So what I now have is two, two, six, and four all in series with each other. And as we are aware, for a series connection, one over C T is one over C1 plus one over C2 plus one over C3. And now because there are four, I will have to add a one over C4 to it. Then now let's put in the values. That will be 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 4. Now um, to add, simply find the LCM of these. And the LCM will be 12. So let's call multiple. 12 into 2 is 6. 12 into 2 is 6. 12 into 6 is 2. And 12 into 4 is 3. So, that gives me that 1 over CT will be 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 2 is 14, plus 3 is 17. That will be 17 over 12. And, simply turning both sides around, CT over 1 equals to 12 over 17. And simply pressing this into your calculator. Type in your numbers, 12 divided by 17 gives 0 0.7 microfarad. All right, now, if you look at this, we're getting an answer of 0 0.7, but we don't have 0 0.7 in our options. Therefore, what could be at fault? What could be one of the factors leading to this wrong answer? 
if we go through our solving and realize all our steps are correct, then we might have to look back at our, back at our question. And what we'll do, we'll notice that rather than solving, rather than two year, in my question, it was actually three microfarads at this point. But instead, we saw two, or rather, we should say, I saw two and was working with two. Which means I have to correct that two to three, implying that this two year for my C2 should be three microfarad. And if that becomes three, when taking my LCM year, 12 into three is four. And when this becomes four, six plus four, 10, plus two, 12, plus three, 15. Meaning that year I should be having 15, not 12. Which means, not 17 rather, and year should also be 15. And now, when I press 12 over 15 with my calculator, you notice I get 0 0.8 microfarad. Exactly the answer in my options. You see, this is one of those mistakes you could easily make. Wherein, instead of seeing the right figure, you see the wrong figure, and then you just go with it. To correct that, all you have to simply do is find where you used that figure in your solving and correct one by one. So you see, you don't have to cancel everything and start over. You can simply correct that single value and then your answer will come out. So that's that. Let's take a look at another question. This one is from the year 1997, question number 34. You could open your three schools jump up right now and you can find the question and we shall solve together. This one says, two 50 microfarad parallel plate capacitors are connected in series. If I was to draw the circuit, we have two 50 microfarad. So it'll be 50 microfarad and 50 microfarad. They are connected in series. The combined capacitor is then connected across a 10 volt battery. You find that these two guys get connected to a battery of rating 10 volts. The charge on each plate of the capacitor is, but then I have to find the charge on each plate. That's right where we said. The charge is the same across the capacitors, which means because we are dealing with a combined capacitor, before I can find the charge, I first of all have to find my combined capacitance. And for a series connection, this will be one of our C1, this one of our C2. I don't need a C3 because they are just two. So one over C2 becomes one over 50, because one over 50. So, because my denominators are the same, there's no need for LCM. Simply take your denominator, add your numerators, 1 plus 1, that is 2. 2 years 1, 20 50 is 25. And then turning around, CT equals 25 microfarad. And now, to find the charge, as you are aware from our formula, charge equals capacitance times voltage, CV. Now, my capacitance is 25 micro. Please do not forget your micro. That's 25 microfarad. And as you are aware, micro simply indicates times 10 to the power minus 6. A mistake we should not make. And then times the voltage, which is 100 volts. This is 100 volts. You see, that could have easily been a mistake. So, it's 100 volts in my question, not 10 volts. So, always be careful. And from this point, I can multiply. Remembering, I do not have a scientific calculator, so what do I do? I could simply say, express 25 in standard form. That would be 2.5 times 10 to the power 1. Then times 10 to the power minus 6. Then expressing 100 as well in standard form. That is times 10 to the power 2. So that will give me 2.5 times 10 to the power 1 plus minus 6 plus 2. So, 
plus times minus is minus. 1 minus 6 is minus 5. Minus 5 plus 2 is minus 3. Of course, it's charge. You need for charge, the column. So you see, my answer is option B. Is that okay? So that is that for this question. Questions are usually this easy. If I'm to try my next one, which is question number 37 from the year 1998. Again, you can assess this question using your O3 schools jam app. This one tells us a parallel plate capacitor has a common plate area of 5. That means A equals 5 times 10 to the power of minus 8 meters squared. And plate separation, that is the distance between the plates, of 2 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Assuming free space, what is the capacitance? And then we are told that E naught equals 9 times 10 to the power minus 12. Coulomb squared per newton per meter squared. So that's my epsilon naught. So, I want to find capacitance. And if you remember, we, we've analyzed this before. We said that for the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor, C equals to epsilon naught A over D when there's free space, or epsilon A over D when there's dielectric material. In this one, we are told to assume free space. That means epsilon naught is 9 times 10 to the power minus 12 times area, which is 5 times 10 to the power minus 8, all over D, which is 2 times 10 to the power minus 3. And again, some of us might be at this point wondering how do I solve this without a scientific calculator? How do I use the calculator on my Jamba app to solve? It's very, very simple. Separate your numbers from the index that means i should be having nine separate that's this number then my next number is five divided by the next number is two while for my powers that would then be 10 to power minus 12 for this first one because it is multiplying this that would be plus minus eight and then because it is dividing this sorry this is to be two times it becomes minus for division, then minus 3. So, 9 times 5 is 45. 45 over 2 is 22.5. Then over here, plus times minus is minus. Minus 12 minus 8 is minus 20. Minus times minus is plus. Minus 20 plus 3 is minus 17. Now, at this point, we'll also be like, we've got the answer. Please be very, very careful. There may be something that resembles this in your option, but it's not quite the answer. Notice, in standard form, my point lies after the first number, not the second. So my point has to go back once, and one gets added to that power. So this will be 2.25 times 10 raised to power Minus 17 plus 1 is minus 16. So my answer is option C. Don't make the mistake of rushing and then choosing option A. All right. We have our next question. This is from the year 2000. And this is question number 30. Again, assess it using your jump app. In this case, we are told we have a diagram. And the diagram shows two capacitors, this P and Q of capacitances, 5 microfarad and 10 microfarad. We have to find the charges stored in each of the capacitors in P and Q, respectively. Now, if you look at your diagram, those capacitors are in parallel. Because these capacitors are parallel, let's write the first one. C1 is 5 microfarad. And C2 is 10 microfarad. Because they are parallel, that means they will both have the same voltage. And the voltage is the voltage across the entire circuit, which is 20 volts for this guy. And also 20 volts 
for this one. However, they shall have different charges. So how do I find the charges? Charge generally equals CV. Therefore, for Q1, which is the charge in this first one, that will be 5 microfarad times 20. Now, you might be asking, why did I convert this micro to 10 raised to the power 6? The reason why is because if you look at your options, the options all come with micro. In that case, there is no reason to convert the micro out of the equation because if I do that, after getting my answer, I would have to go back and express in micro column. So there's no reason. I simply solve like this. 5 times 20 is 100. And I can put the micro here, column. That means my charge in the 5 microfarad, which is P, is 100. But my charge in the other one is going to be, again, C, which is 10 micro times 20. That is 200 micro column. So obviously, my answer is going to be respectively 100 and 20. Option B. Now, another thing you may have noticed is there's a simple thing you could do in this question. Because my options are all so different, once I know that the first one is 100, if I look at my options and only one option has the first one as 100, then that option must be correct. I have no need to solve for this one. Because based on my options, if this first one is 100, then automatically the next answer must be 200. So, okay. All right. And then again, moving forward. Let's take a look at this next question coming from the year 2001. 2001, question number 28. In this again, we have a circuit diagram. Let's draw it so that we can analyze together. We have 12 volts here. And then this goes to three capacitors. And obviously, this is a parallel, sorry, this is a series connection because they are joined head to tail. The fact that it is bent does not change anything. All you have to see is they are also joined one wire in between, not gathering to a point. So this first one is a bit C1, C2, then C3. This is 2 microfarad. This is 6 microfarad. And this is 3 microfarad. Okay, we are being asked to find the potential differences across C1, C2, and C3, respectively. Now, if you remember, we said in a series connection, the voltage gets shared or the charges are the same. That means the first thing I will do is to find my cumulative capacitance so that I can obtain said charge. I don't get the cumulative capacitance. Because it is in series, 1 over CT shall be 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. So that will give me 1 over 2 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3. I'll say of 6, 3, and 2 will obviously be 6. 6 into 3, 6 into 2 rather is 3. 6 into 6 is 1, and 6 into 3 is 2. If I add these together, 3 plus 1, 4, 4 plus 2, 6 over 6, and then CT equals 1 microfarad. So, my cumulative capacitance across all three capacitors is 1 microfarad. And once I know this capacitance, I shall be able to get the charge because again they all share the charge so q equals cv my c is 1 times 10 to the power minus 6 and my voltage is 12 volts so 1 times 12 is 12 times 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb or cancel written as 12 micro coulomb now, however, please remember, what we have been asked to solve for in this question is the potential differences across the capacitances individually. Now, with a bit of common sense, we can be able to tell 
if q equals to cv then v across any of these capacitors which i'm not calling vx or x representing the number will be equals to the charge which is the same for all of them divided by capacitance of that particular capacitor so in a series connection to find the voltage in any of the capacitors will be the overall charge divided by the capacitance of that particular capacitor so with my first one v1 will be obviously q over c1 and q is 12 because q is the micro column that i have to express this one out either i can just work with 12 then c1 is 2 12 over 2 6 volts v2 will be q over c2 which will also be 12 over c2 is 6 12 over 6 is 2 volts and then v3 will be q over c3 which again is 12 and my c3 is 3 microfarads so that will be 4 volts so my answer is obviously going to be 6 2 and 4 volts respectively which is option d so you see no matter how complicated the question might look from the beginning little bits of analysis and you shall definitely get your answer okay and i think we have time for a couple more examples remaining in the year 2001 let's take a look at question number 29 using our o3 schools jam app now again we have a circuit this diagram shows two capacitors p and q and capacitance is two microfarad and four microfarad respectively connected to a dc source the ratio of the energy stored in p to q is now all we need to know about this question is this capacitor is here this one up is p and this one down here is q the one up is rated two microfarad down is four microfarad now the question is asking us the ratio of the energy being stored in each of in p to q energy in p but energy in q now as you are aware forgetting all other factors since they are showing the same voltage energy as usual must be one over two qv but i did not know q instead i know c so how to use the formula that deals with c one over two cv squared now when i'm doing my ratio if i'm having one over two up here and one over two down here they cancel out so i'm unconcerned with my one over two then for my voltage v square up v square down they both have the same voltage so v square goes so in reality what affects the ratio of this power when they share the same voltage will be the capacitance cp over cq is that straightforward my cp is 2 my cq is 4 22 1 24 2 and therefore my answer must be 1 ratio 2 option a as you can see these questions are quite simple there's no reason to panic or run from it and if you are okay with that we shall take one last question and we shall call it quits on capacitors now this question comes from the year 2005 question number 30 using your o3 schools jam app and um for this question again we have a figure and this figure has um three capacitors connected to this dc source of 12 volts above is two microfarad Six microfarad and three microfarad. We have been asked to we have been told that if the potential difference across the system is 12 volts, we have to find the potential difference across just the six microfarad capacitor. Now, as you are aware, we can see that remember series connection, they are going to share the charge, but they will divide the voltage among themselves they each have the same charge but divide that voltage among themselves that means that 
the voltage for every single guy if you remember that q equals to cv it means that the voltage for each individual one will be the charge which they all have divided by that single capacitor so if i want to find the voltage across the six microfarad then it will simply be this charge divided by that six microfarad but that means first of all if i can do anything i must obtain said charge how do i obtain my overall charge first of all i have to know my overall capacitance and again being a series connection that becomes one over two plus one over six plus one over three lcm gives six six into two is three six into six is one six into three is two so that gives me 3 plus 1, 4, 4 plus 2, 6 over 6. And when they cancel out, 6C must be equal to 1 microfarad. And looking at it overall, if C is 1, then my overall charge Q must be 1 microfarad times the voltage, which is 12. So I'll be having 12 microcoulomb. And therefore, now I can say, using the formula as outside area, that the voltage across the 6 microfarad will be the charge, which is 12 microcoulomb, over 6 microfarad. Micro cancels out micro. 12 over 6 is 2 volts. So, my 6 microfarad carries just a capacitance of 2 volts, which is option A. Now, as simply a means of general knowledge, you must note that the bigger capacitance carries the smaller voltage, while the smaller capacitance carries the bigger voltage. And on that note, I want to say thank you very much for attending this class. Remember, again, this class is sponsored by O3 Schools Jump app. You can like this channel, subscribe to this channel to enjoy more videos taking you through different topics in physics and across other subjects as you prepare for your jump. And also using your three schools app, you shall achieve success. Thank you for listening. My name is Athanasius.